Hello, uh, in this video I'm going to show you how to install the tool that we've been using to analyze sticky traps and count the number of insects that are on them and then organize those by size classes. So this is a image analysis tool. Um, okay, how to install that and then how to use it to run your own analyses, uh, which is probably something that you want to do because Either the uh, web tool hasn't been working so well for you because maybe you want to run larger batches or uh, you've been uh, trying to get uh, my help to do this for you. And um, of course, I didn't quite have enough time to do this for you. So this way you can do it uh, yourself and get your results much more quickly. So first things first, uh, how to install this. Well, it's a, a piece of custom software which normally, but not in this case, but normally would be kind of uh, difficult to install because, well, it's written in Python, so you would have to install Python, and then there's a bunch of dependencies which you would have to install, yada, 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 all kind of complicated. Um, but what we're going to do is use a tool that allows us to uh, get the whole thing as one big bundle and not worry about the dependencies. And to make that magic work, we have to install what is called Docker. So we're going to go to docker.com. And uh, on this website, uh, what you're going to want to look for is a tool called the Docker Desktop. Um, and it has versions for all different operating systems. Uh, as you can see, I'm on a Mac, so I use the Mac version. There's also one for Windows, there's one for Linux. Um, it's all rather well documented, uh, so I'm sure you'll be able to figure it out. Um, so the result that you try to accomplish here is that in the end, you can run the Docker tool which has this cute icon of a whale with a bunch of containers on its back. So if I launch that, then on my laptop, here at the top right, it's going to be starting up. So there, there's this little icon that shows that this service is now booting up. Um, this will take a few seconds. Uh, on Windows, it's somewhere else. It's probably an icon that's in the bottom right of the screen. Um, but wherever it is, this is what you want to get uh, up and running. And um, once this is done, then it'll have a green thingy that says, well, the Docker desktop is running. So uh, maybe at this point, uh, pause your video and make sure you get your Docker desktop running. Okay, assuming you've figured out how to do that, then uh, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to go to GitHub and then to uh, the address github.com forward slash naturalis slash trapcap. And here we are. Most of this page is really uninteresting for you, but uh, if you scroll down a bit, then here's the documentation. And actually this part right here, this is the part that matters. So this is how to run the tool locally, which is by typing a command. And uh, so on my Mac, I do that by running a command in the, what's called the terminal. Uh, on uh, Windows, the equivalent is the MS-DOS box, which you might remember. So there's, uh, a, for example, if you press the start button, then this menu pops up and somewhere there's a facility where you can run a command uh, and there in that little text box you type cmd enter and then it opens up also a, a window where you can uh, type text commands 
Um, so this you this is something that maybe you'll have to Google if you've never done this before, but open up a DOS box on Windows. Okay, so we have that, and then here's what the command looks like. First, it starts with docker run. That's always the same, that's just part of the docker system. Then there's two parameters that we have to give it. The first one is the location of our configuration file, which I'll show you in a minute. And then the next argument is the location of our folder with the photos of our sticky traps. And then the fourth line is, well, it gives the name of the tool, naturale slash trap cap. And then where we want to write the results. So the results are going to be in tabular form. Um, so it's going to be tab separated tabular data, which you can open in Excel or in R or something like that. And with this greater than symbol and then a file name, this is how it's written to a file. So here we go. Uh, the first thing that we need to do is get our configuration file. And I've provided here an example. You can see here, click on the example. So this is the file. Um, all of the lines that start with this hashtag symbol, that's all just comments. So they just explain what you're supposed to do. And then there's only a couple of lines that actually have, sorry, have the configuration data. So here you have to tell the system what the dimensions are of your traps in millimeters, because of course we need to calibrate the size of the insects in relation to the size of the trap. Then this line here specifies whether or not some to crop something from the edges of the trap. So maybe there might be perforations or other markings on the edges which you want to take or remove, you know. And then here you specify how much to crop. Uh, and then on these lines uh, you specify what the lightest and the darkest yellow is, um, which is the yellow of the sticky trap. So anything that falls outside of that range is assumed to be an insect. Okay, so we're going to download that file and I'll just store it on my desktop. And uh, so here it is now. Uh, and it might be uh, instructive to open this in a text editor. So on Mac, there's this tool called BB Edit. So this is opening all my other old files, but here's the configuration file. And now you can see that all of this stuff that's kind of grayed out, that's all just uh, explanatory information. And the only stuff that matters is the height and the width of our trap, whether to crop any edges, by how much, and the color range of the yellows. So that's the configuration file. Then the next thing here is the location of our photos. So let's run through some uh, example photos. I'll make a folder which I'll call photos. And here I have some example images. So here there's four JPEG files. Um, and I'll just open these in other tabs. So what GitHub does is that it gives you this kind of preview. So from here, you'll want to click download. So I'll do this for all four of these. So these have now gone to into my downloads folder, uh, which you know you'll have the equivalent on Windows. There's a folder where the stuff goes when you click download, and from there uh, we're going to move these into the photos folder. 
minutes, so there they are. And now we're basically all set. So let's see if we can run this whole thing here. I have my terminal window open, and then I move into the desktop folder on the terminal. So now if I do a file listing, which on Mac is called ls, uh, on Windows it's called uh, dir, dir. Um, so here's my files. Um, so you can see that I'm now looking at this stuff here, right? There we go. Okay, so docker run. Now I have to give the, sorry, the absolute path to the configuration file. Users, this is my username. So that's the input file location. And then this next part here, this is always going to be the same. So colon slash sticky traps. Well, I also have to give it the location of my photos. So again, this needs to be an absolute path. So users username, this will be something else on your system, right? Uh, desktop and photos. Oops. And um, then this next part here is also always the same. So slash images. And then the mm, name of the tool, so Naturalis Trapcap and then the output file. So you can give this output file whatever name you want, but here I'll just call it results.tsv tab separated values. Okay, well, um, let's see if this works. I'm now going to hit enter. And now Docker says, well, I'm unable to find the image or the bundle locally. And so then it figures out, well, I have to fetch a bunch of things, or maybe those dependencies, what well, they already exist on my system, on your system, there'll be some downloads happening one by one that pulls in all these dependencies. And then finally, it um, will have everything in place and then it will run an analysis. So it did that right away. So you can see here that it produced a results file. Now, next time when you run the same analysis again, so I now take this whole uh, incantation and I'll just rerun it. Now you can see that it's now not downloading anything, right? Because now it knows, oh, I have everything I need. And so it just reruns the analysis. And this will produce this results file. And if I open that in my text editor again, you can see that this is tab separated data. Um, so I can also uh, open this in well, something like R or, for example, here in Excel. And there you can see that it reads it in as a table. So uh, hopefully this gets you up and running so you can um, run your own analyses. And of course, you can do this with many more than just four photos, basically as many as you like. Um, and, well, hopefully this works for you. Okay, best of luck. Thanks.